Mixing with Mike, plug of the week is the Softube Weiss DS1 MK3. This is the audio examples, or part two of the video. There's a, another video, part one, uh, which goes through the feature set, uh, all of the individual knobs and functions, and uh, all of the other settings that you can adjust internally. So let's take a look and uh, dig right into some audio examples. So I wanted to start here um, with a simple basic setup. This is sort of a, a kind of a semi, little bit of a pump and breathe type of thing that moves with the drums. I have a, a five millisecond attack. There's no preview. So what the preview does is it takes the original signal uh, to be processed, uh, feeds it across um, with a delay. The delay amount is set here with the preview function. And, and then uh, the split of the signal before the delay goes through all of the analysis for uh, the peak and RMS signal, uh, then uh, applies the settings, ratio, threshold, and softny for what they call the nonlinear transfer curve. And uh, with you know whatever bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and that would get applied. So when you apply that delay there, um, this would allow you to uh, apply the process settings as sort of like a look ahead feature, essentially, is what it amounts to. Uh, when you're working in the DAW, though, uh, I, it seems as if all of that is compensated for um, in the delay compensation engines of your DAW, so you're not incurring any latency, as far as I can tell, from any of this. So uh, let's take a look. At this, so we have a five millisecond attack, um, an initial release delay of one millisecond. So it holds on to the gain reduction for a millisecond before starting the fast release cycle, which is 160. There's a long curve here, um, which is the average. This is sort of a transitional um, uh, phase, or uh, which judges the relationship between the, the uh, release, uh, fast release, and the slow release. Uh, so think of this as you go towards lighter numbers, you'll get a little bit more pumping and breathing as you go towards uh, larger numbers, um, then it'll kind of smooth things out a bit. So this gives you a way to control the release characteristic. There's also some ways to control the attack characteristic, which I'm going to go over. Uh, right now we have this set up as a hard knee uh, to add a little bit of aggressiveness to the sound. Uh, two to one ratio, so fairly light, just a little bit of makeup uh, for uh, the added uh, just for the game reduction, to make up for the game reduction. So this is ganged in stereo. I'll, I'll do a little demonstration, show you mid-side. But let's start here uh, with an audio example. I'll start with it bypassed, and then I'll bring it in. So what you could see there is uh, you could hear how it very clearly and very transparently um, moves the signal. Now, if I want, I can go to slower attack times. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just push this out to a slower attack time. So one other way to make that prompt uh, pump in a slightly different way is to go up more to like, you know, like a 30 millisecond or so attack time. This is a little bit more SSL-ish in, in terms of that. Uh, of the way that it work. You know, if you want to get all technical, we can make this 100 milliseconds on the initial quick release. And we'll continue with the hard knee on this. And uh, and I just want to show you this function because it'll set up how you can color the attack time, not just by setting the attack, but also by using the preview and the soft knee function. We'll give So if you want to, monitoring the gain reduction, you'll see it over here. Uh, it can also show you the waveform curve where you'll see the gain reduction pulling downward up there, and you'll see a metering for that.
just see how it just in such a crystal clear way opens up the mix and just kind of cracks it open. Uh, really amazing. Uh, it's just, you know, astounding in terms of the transparency and the way that it works. So let's play a little bit with just using the knee. So the way that the knee works, if you can see the curve right here uh, based on the threshold, as I move this, you'll notice that it starts to round out. So what will happen is this will kind of average out a little bit more of the way that the compression is applied. So it'll sort of smooth it in. And what will happen is you'll start to get gain reduction actually before the signal reaches threshold. So you may find that you're adjusting the threshold. But where I want you to pay attention and really focus and and let me just set this back to five milliseconds because I think you can you could hear uh, the aggressiveness of it a little bit better and then you could hear how the knee softens uh, the way that the attack is applied and this is one way to uh, control or soften um, the aggressiveness of it if you need to. We'll give a move. So what you can hear there is just how smooth that is. You notice that I had to adjust the threshold to kind of pull it up because, uh, like I said, when you start to soften that knee, it starts to grab and sort of starts to apply gain reduction, which smooths it out. So it gets you a little bit more averaging overall. Another way to approach this, and, and this sometimes works really well if you have, say, a faster attack time, yet uh, you want to sort of grab on to the transient a little bit more. Um, you know, without cutting it down too much, you can use the preview function. So fundamentally, the way this works is as I start to pull the preview function in, uh, what'll happen is it'll move it into the attack window. So the way that the attack is applied, it's not that it delays the attack by 20 milliseconds. Actually, what happens is the attack occurs over a period of 20 milliseconds. And so uh, if the transient is at the very beginning of that curve, it goes through practically unaffected. However, if you delay that signal and you push that transient into the attack curve, as you start to get closer to 20 milliseconds, it'll get closer to instantaneous. And this gives you a way of coloring the way that it enters that attack. Now, this is uh, a variant or slightly different, or it's very different than actually just making the faster attack because one way to look at it would you say, oh, well, I'll just make the attack 20 microseconds, which will be just like right to the sample and just, you know, nail it right there. But it's a very different sound because you don't get all the graduations or gradations of that as you go through uh, by doing it with the preview. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to... Um, Mute this down just to drums because that'll make it the most obvious and just listen to what that does. In particular, you hear it with the kick drum. So you can already hear there how it softens it, just going a millisecond in. And let me just compare that to, uh, to no preview. Here, you see if I push it up to 32 milliseconds, then it lines right up and effectively I'm grabbing the transient full on. So 
the and if you go beyond that, then essentially you start to get compression before the actual transient occurs, and and then you or they start to get other odd uh, pumping and breathing artifacts as the rest of it sort of filters through the rest of the uh, of the release function. So you can see how there is a, a lot of flexibility just in there with this. I just want to show you one other thing here. So I'm going to go back to like the five milliseconds. This a three to five milliseconds is, is kind of an area that gives you like a little bit of an edge. It's, it's like an area uh, that you'll find uh, attack wise that like on the 33609, the SSL uh, bus compressor is like a three millisecond, uh, has a three millisecond setting and the channel compressor has that and in there there's kind of a number that adds like a little bit of an aggressive edge to uh the attack especially on like something like a kick drum and and that's you know more of a dominant feature of this particular uh track but what i'll do is i'll bring in uh some of the music here and then i want to uh, feature a little bit of how uh the shape of this actually maybe i'll, I'll, I'll leave the the music out just with the drums so you can hear it a little bit more clearly this maybe I'll apply a little bit more gain reduction. I'm going to show you how the averaging feature works to transition the fast release to the slow release. Now, what ends up happening in here is that um, if I set this to a lower setting, I will get a quicker recovery on the gain reduction initially and uh, before transitioning to the slow release. Um, if I make this wider, what will happen is... Um, it, the game reduction will not fall as far and will sustain a little bit longer before going into the release curve. Um, okay, so let's have a let's have a listen here. What I'll do is I'll start with a faster setting and then let's work from there. See how it holds on to it a little bit longer there and let me go to a faster setting. Drops a little bit quicker. And this is just a way of subtly shaping uh, the way uh, the, the characteristic curve or shape of uh, the release of the game reduction. And, you know, in, in some instances, it will be uh, more or less, you know, obvious. Um, so maybe in this one, it wasn't like the most obvious example, uh, but it fundamentally gives you a, a good idea of what it's doing, or should give you some kind of idea of what it's doing. Um, I just want to show this, uh, which is kind of fun here. If I take uh, the mid side here now right down right now I have the the side chain linked which means that uh, compression would be applied equally on uh, both the left and right channel oh I'm sorry I, sorry take that back the input signal stereo uh, would essentially get mounted up for the side chain to work with so if I take this out then this would sort of spread the game reduction side to side now since what's really driving the compression here is primarily the kick drum and the snare there's not much else that would drive it that would create left-right movement. So sometimes that's kind of a, I think if you have a lot of side energy, sometimes that's a, a really cool way to help uh, create some space. But there's another really cool way to use this uh, in uh, mid-side mode. So if I switch it to mid-side versus stereo, now what'll happen is the vast majority of the game reduction will be applied to the center channel, okay? Um, now, if I switch over to the uh, channel two settings, you'll see something that's completely different here. And uh, so what I want to do here is I'm going to go to my options menu here and I'm going to copy channel one to channel two. So this will duplicate my settings back and forth. So as I go back and forth here, now I have the same basic settings, but I can control them independently and then start to work from that starting place. So let's hear this uh, mid side. And the 
cool part about having that where you're working with the pumping and breathing on the mid, especially if there's not a ton of information, like it's not in this particular mix, it's mostly reverberant and effect information, is that it starts to wrap or pull out from the speaker. So that's a really cool uh, way of doing that or using that. Now, if I ungang it here, I can go to channel two and pull the threshold down. The mood, all these crazy feelings, you expect me to do. And if you notice here, you'll see gain reduction separate for mid and side channel. course if I wanted to you know play around with the different settings and you know uh, do different settings for the side and all of that sort of stuff so that works incredibly effectively just uh, be conscious of the fact of the copy A to B B to A channel one channel uh, two to one one to two uh, so these things can kind of come in handy especially with the A to B you have two basic setups here that you can uh, work with so uh, you may find that you get a setting that you like but you want to tweak it a little bit so you go A to B now you go over to the B setting you make some tweaks and then you can just uh, go back and forth uh, between them okay so that's the basic setup there uh, next uh, I'm gonna open up a different um, uh, setup here and let's just take a look at it there we go um, so uh, what I have set up here uh, in this case, is a, a deesser, right? So what I have is a mid-side, unganged, and uh, so what I have is this only applied to channel one. Now, this is where the monitor control comes in. Um, so I'm going to go have a section here that's got some S's. Let's just kind of listen to the first couple lines here. So let's uh, take this out. I'll bypass it just so you can hear it. All right, so you could hear how that, that S kind of cuts through. Not too nasty, but just to kind of show you what's going on. So I have a relatively fast attack here. Uh, I have a hard knee. Now I can soften the way that it works. But instead of working full band like I was in the previous example, I'm working here within a band limited section. And the band limit here is focused right around here. So I can see within the frequency window right, right where it's happening. I can control this by sweeping through it. Here you can see the frequency. This will always show you uh, whatever that uh, current amount is. Uh, if I want, I could change this to a, a low, a high pass filter, excuse me. Uh, I could do low pass filter. I could do, you know, so for DSing, I'm either doing a band pass or I'm doing a high pass. Or, I'm sorry, yes, high pass. Uh, getting everything all mixed up here. And then I can control the width here. Right now it's one and two thirds octaves, but I can increase it or narrow it and just kind of uh, uh, work with it from from that angle so you could see there and this is where the monitor function comes in because with this I can monitor uh, this exact frequency area all right so you could hear that a little bit and uh, you know not a lot of volume in there um, and uh, so let's uh, set it up. I took it out of monitor mode and then let's just put this in so you can notice the gain reduction as it occurs and you'll see it only on this angle. Actually, uh, this is a, a good place where we could show the waveform display. If I want to make this more aggressive, I could uh, push the ratio up here. Let's push it up to 10 to 1. Alright, so I can I can change that there. I have a, a hard knee. I can lower the threshold probably a little bit, get away with a little bit uh, lower. And 
then if I want to soften the way that that works, I can lighten up here a little bit with the knee. Now that starts to grab other information here. So what I can do is I can raise my threshold up a little bit again. See how you really get just by just with the knee there just at 20 percent how that can soften the transition so it's not so hard cutting and and making it sound like there's a lisp where you're over cutting it but you can see how very efficiently it grabs in i mean there's a reason why it's called the ds1 you know it's there's a big part of this in the way that they advertise it's a digital ds or compressor limiter so you get a lot of functionality out of it uh and so uh in this case um mid-side uh, is the best. Sometimes it, it works in stereo. It just kind of depends on what needs to be de -esced. Obviously, if you had background vocals that had an essing issue and they were off to the sides, you could uh, uh, switch that over and do that processing just on the sides or optimize it just for the sides. The other thing that's very cool about this that I want to point out uh, in working with this is that there's gain makeup because there's gain reduction within that band. So this gives me the ability uh, to push that up overall based on the gain reduction. Um, so this allows me to kind of make up for what's going on. Now, what happens is this gain makeup only works within the band limited area, only where gain reduction is applied. So in a normal makeup game, what you'll get is a total output level, and that's a completely different function. You know, as we get to the to the gain controls, you have an input level right going into the compressor. You have an output level, or what they call a, a limiter gain, and uh, so this is feeding into the to the uh, safe limiter. And then you have an output gain, which is the total output uh, after all of the processing. But uh, after the input gain, prior to the limiter gain, is the gain makeup. But the gain makeup only works within the area that's being affected by the processing. So this is really important because we can make up for overall presence or even add some presence to that area. And then when the S is cut back, it pulls a little bit more into the track. So you could see you could see just you know from that how that becomes a very valuable and powerful function within this okay so that's that's the deessing example uh there's just <laughs> there's so much stuff that you can do with this it's hard to kind of uh, um just um you know limit it to you know uh just a few simple functions so let me uh let me call up another one here and uh this will kind of open up a few other uh, examples uh, so in this one, we're going to talk about the parallel compression and the way the parallel compression works. So um, in this case, I have a full band parallel compression, and, and I'll show you uh, one way to use it. Um, in mastering, one of the most powerful ways to use this is to have, in parallel compression, what you have is the unaffected stereo mix, um, no gain or anything added to it. Uh, that's passing through. Okay, so that's that's passing through unaffected, and then you have a split of that signal. It runs through processing, uh, band limited or full bandwidth, whatever it is you do. You apply all your attack and release settings, ratios, knees, all the other stuff, and um, and that gets added into or mixed into, and that's done with the gain makeup. So, for example, here if I'm if I'm running a parallel compression, I'm gonna do this full band. Um, one way of, of doing this is to bring in like a smoothing kind of uh, compression. So if I have here, you know, a very slow attack, so it's 100 millis, uh, 160 millisecond attack, very short uh, release delay. So, uh, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference because the attack is so slow. A long release, right? So 350 millisecond release uh, and, and a longer uh, transition curve. The idea is to kind of create more or less a smooth kind of functioning. Okay, uh, the left and right is ganged, it's full bandwidth, and so what happens is if I pull this down, right, uh, if I pull this down uh, to minus 60, minus 60, effectively I have the mix with no processing added in. And, and so what will happen is I'm, I'm going to blend or, or mix this in, 
and, and then I may adjust the output gain uh, for Unity once we kind of come up with something that we like. So notice how this will start to kind of fill out the track, right, and, and increase and improve the imaging. The design of this is to help improve loudness, and it could be more aggressive with it. Uh, essentially, uh, part of the the uh, uh, feature on this, and you'll notice that I have I have a hard knee, but you know the attack is so slow that's not really going to make a big difference. The threshold is very low, down to like minus fifty, and the ratio is one point one one to one. So a very very light compression, but very low. And what this does is it kind of takes the average level and just kind of compresses it, pulls it up into the mix. Uh, and then what you do is you just bring in a little bit more body and weight for those mixes that maybe lack, um, you know, um, like a solid imaging characteristic. This can help uh, to kind of bring it in. Now, there's another way to use this uh, in, in a band uh, limited function. So what I'll do here is, uh, let me just see the best way to do this. Okay, so I'll do an A to B, uh, go over here to the B setup. Uh, and what I want to do actually is work in um, a band limited capacity. I'm actually going to swing something up here, but I'm going to do something uh, a little bit different here as a way of kind of adding presence. I'm going to take us off the parallel compression here. Similar type of settings here, maybe I'll um, increase the attack uh, a little bit, but I still want the long sort of averaging type of thing here. Uh, and But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to an expander. So if I go past the 12 o'clock position here, now my ratio inverts. So now it's one, uh, 1 to 1 1.05, right? Or I can make it uh, 1, you know, 1 to 2, you know, or 1 to 3, all the way down to 1 to 5. Uh, and so what this does is it, it becomes an upward expander. So now signals that pass above threshold get uh, pushed upward. So I'm going to start a little bit, you know, it sounds like this, like this is not very aggressive, you know, 1.6, 1 to 1.6. Um, but uh, within this particular frequency band, what I can do here is I can start to bring in or add in a little bit of presence. So I'm going to start with this particular band. If I want to, I can hit the monitor button to kind of focus in on it. And I'm going to bring this back up because now this is um, this is gain makeup for this particular band, um, but I'm not running it in parallel. So this is just expanding within this particular band. Oh, sorry. I think I do need to run this in parallel. Excuse me. Uh, one more time. get my uh, um, output level here. You could see here, like the the gain makeup, and in fact, you can see it's going up to 4.6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this. Uh, so if I click and drag on this, I can increase it all the way up to 24 dB of range here. So depending upon this, I'll make it nine. Kind of drag it into there. I think I'm all 
so aggressive with the threshold here. I should check my settings. hear how that running in parallel blended in kind of just pumping up and moving some of the higher frequency energy helps to uh, uh, open up the top end of the mix in a similar way if I shifted this down into a lower area uh, and I could narrow the cue here a little bit if I focused it down here I could also use this as a way to pump up the kick drum I run into a section where there's no kick drum. Uh, should we go back here to the chorus section? And I can I can increase the attack time. Uh, and and release time if I want to make it you know like really press on the attack as opposed to you know what this is really doing is bringing in a little bit more warmth. Uh, another way to approach this might be to do uh, to go up in frequency here and maybe push low frequencies. <laughs> kind of help to fortify and, and bring in warmth in a mix that maybe is a little uh, thin. So um, you could see just from some of these examples how, you know, the, the uh, number of possibilities and the ways that you can use this are, are pretty dramatic, you know, and pretty crazy. The one, one other thing that I, I wanted, and we're going to go back to um, my uh, initial uh, setup here. So let's open this back up here takes a second for it to open up and uh, let's just check this out real quick So I'm going to cue back here a little bit. So uh, just setting this up, and I may make some other adjustments. One of the other things that I want to uh, get into is also looking at the uh, limiter type. So um, if you work with it, and we could push into the limiter, uh, the DS1 uh, is, this is the one that comes stock with the hardware piece. And then what Softube has done is they've added in two other uh, limiter types. So these are brick wall limiters. Um, the, the DS1 is the one that's built in. There are no settings other than just flipping it on. So there, there's nothing else other than doing that that uh, um, gives it its functionality. So you kind of get, there's no other settings. You get what you get with it. Uh, the type one is set up to, um, for more for loudness to give it a little bit more RMS energy, to hit it a little bit harder. Um, the type two is a uh, true peak uh, limiter. So if that's necessary, uh, are important, then um, you can uh, select that. But I wanted to go through some of the options here. Now, the way that we're going to drive into this, so we'll start. We'll start with the the basic setting. Uh, you'll we'll monitor gain reduction here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let's just uh, let me just check 
the total level here. Where are we at? Go give a move. So my my peak levels are are somewhere you know four or five or somewhere in that range. Just wanted to get an idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output gain just so we can maintain a little bit of uh, of you know uh, the volume here. I'm going to take the limiter gain. So this is going to drive into the safe limiter. So if I if I adjust the limiter gain, this is how much signal we're feeding in. So you'll see the increase in level uh, going up. You'll see you know the levels uh, meter up over here uh, if we push through too far then you'll get um, the uh, true peak indication that's an option uh, in there if you watch the first video uh, that exists uh, somewhere in here true peak or it can just show sample overs um. so we're going to watch our game reduction over here on this side a whole lot in you know more than two or three db it starts to uh collapse a little bit let's go through the different types here see how you can drive a significant more amount of gain into that. Uh, let's go to uh, type 2, which is a true peak option. on the base uh, a little bit of, uh, of gristle there on the base i think the type one is probably the best so it, it's sitting on that minus 0.4 because i set the output gain to minus four so that's why it's going there and not on true peak so that you saw a little bit there where it went kind of a touch over but that's the basic way now uh, when you set your output gain you could set it you know to minus one if it's you know like an itunes release that would be sort of standard for itunes release uh or you know you could some people go uh, minus 0.1 minus 0.2 minus 0.3 uh whatever your particular flavor is and you would get that at the output gain stage and uh, work with it. But as you can see here, it's a very powerful um, processor. Uh, there's just uh, so much that you can do with it. The more that you dig into it, the more that you'll find uh, different amazing ways to do use it. Uh, uh, it's just, you know, really amazing to have this. This is like a, you know, 10, almost $10,000 unit in hardware form. And to have this in plug-in form and available for mastering or even mixed work is pretty astounding. So Softube, amazing job as always. Uh, YSDS1 MK3 uh, is the plugin of the week.